That's all right. You are not alone. I am near. I hear you. I see you. I know your effort. I'm proud of your sacrifice. And regardless of where you are in your journey, I am not finished with you. What beautiful words. Uh, and Mother's Day is a day for honouring and remembering uh, the mums or the mums figures in our lives and the significant impact that they've had upon our lives, how they've shaped us. And like Trav said, that's right, we're not just talking about biological mums, we're also talking about our foster mums, step mums, adoptive mums, spiritual mums, grandmothers. There's lots of pe- women who play that mum figure in our life. And mums tend to pass on certain sayings to their kids just by sheer repetitiveness. <laughs> And I read this funny thing about uh, my mother taught me statements the other day and I thought I'd share a few with you to see if you can actually, uh, if, if you have heard them from your own mother or mum figure in your life, but also some of the things that mums just out of their, their kindness try to teach us. So my mother taught me, my mother taught me logic. If you fall off that swing and break your neck, you can't go to the shops with me. The kids probably going, well, yes, I don't really want to go to the shops with you and hello. <laughs> My mother taught me humour. When that lawnmower cuts off your toes, don't come running to me. <laughs> My mother taught me genetics. You are just like your father. <laughs> My mother taught me anticipation. Just you wait until your dad gets home. And the look, the look that goes with it. My mother taught me about receiving. You're going to get given some serious consequences when we get home, let me tell you. Someone's heard that before. (laughs) My mother taught me how to pray. You better pray that stain comes out of the carpet. Uh Uh-huh. My mother taught me about resilience. You'll sit there until all that spinach is finished. (laughs) My mother taught me the circle of life. I brought you into this world and I can take you out. (laughs) And the all-time favourite thing my mother taught me, justice. One day you will have kids. (laughs) And then you'll know what it's like. And I just can't wait. (laughs) Do you know, God sees and knows... (laughs) Everything that we go through, particularly on Mother's Day, and Mother's Day can be, um, it's funny sometimes to think of the things, the little sayings that mum's taught us, but it can be a day of mixed emotions. There's joy, gratitude, warmth and memories, but there's also sadness, sometimes resentment, relational strain, and sometimes a reminder of painful loss. And I'm really conscious today that for some of us here, today is, is a hard day. It's not necessarily an easy day. It could be a combination of these. But God has something to say to each one of us today through his word. To those of us who are full of joy and gratitude today, who have taken time to spoil mum, have done something kind, have cooked her breakfast, have bought her a gift because it's Mother's Day, I believe that God is just so delighted with that. He's saying, that's brilliant. (laughs) I love that you did this. Taking the time to honour a mum and the way she loves and gives to others is so worthwhile because it gives people a glimpse of God's love, the way mums love. But he's also saying to us, how will you treat her tomorrow? And the day after that, and the other 364 days of the year, (laughs) will you still want to honour her when you wake up on Monday? Honouring our mum and mum figures in our lives is important to God. It's important to God. How do we know this? In Ephesians 6 verses 2 to 3, the Bible says, Honour your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Do you know God sees and knows how we treat our mums every day of the year? It's a bit of a scary thought. (laughs) Not just on Mother's Day. 
He doesn't want us to honour everything that mums say or do because not everything that mums say or do is honourable. Mums can get grumpy. Mums can say unkind words. Mums can let us down and mums are not perfect. (laughs) But to honour someone, it means to think about why they are important, why they are of worth and to remember it and to celebrate it. When we honour someone, we notice and we value their contribution. So honouring our mums is not just for Mother's Day. In God's eyes, we owe our mums a debt of honour that never ends. And young children, yes, are meant to honour their mums through obedience. But for adult children, it can take some thought, (laughs) some prayer and some creativity. How can you do it? Well, here's just a few things for us to think about today. You can forgive her. You can speak well of her. You can esteem her privately and publicly and not put embarrassing posts about her on Facebook. (laughs) You can seek her wisdom and her help. Now, you might not agree with everything she advises and you might have to stand on your own convictions and say, I'm actually not going to take that advice, but you can actually have a posture of seeking her wisdom and her help. You can support her and you can provide for her. They're just some practical ways that you can honour your mum 365 days of the year. To those of us who are feeling a bit sad or lonely today, I believe God is saying, you are not forgotten and you are not overlooked. How do we know this? Well, in Isaiah 49, 15, the Bible says, can a mother forget her nursing child? Can she feel no love for the child she has born? But even if that were possible, I would not forget you. Why would God not forget you? (laughs) Well, he made you. He likes you. He loves you. (laughs) He knows everything about you. And he has proven his love and 100% commitment to you because he died for you on a cross. Do you know, God hates sin. And we have done the wrong thing in our thoughts and our actions and our behaviours. And God hates sin. It breaks his heart. And the, the actual root of all sin is saying, you know what, God, I don't want you in my life. I want to do life my own way. I don't care about your way. I just want to live my life. It's called independence from God. And he cannot let sin go unpunished because he's also a just God as well as a loving God. He cannot let it go unpunished. But the reason why you can know that God would not forget you is because he decided to take the punishment so you wouldn't have to. He actually took the punishment for our wrongdoing on himself on a cross where he is perfect and he's done nothing wrong. But on a cross... The Bible says he actually became sin for us. He actually took on our sin as punishment from God. And Jesus cried out on that cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He experienced what it is like to be forsaken and abandoned as the Father turned away as he took the punishment for our sin on the cross. And he experienced that. So you would never have to. So you would never have to be abandoned, rejected, forgotten. The nails that went into his hands, his blood that was shed, he did it for you. He did it because he loves you, because he wanted to demonstrate and provide a way for you to know, like Shay said, to know God as your heavenly father. 
Because not only did he take the punishment for your sin, but he gives you Jesus' perfect record when you put your trust in him. Not only does he say, you know what, I'll take the punishment for what deserved to be punished for sin, the thing that cut you off from God, that separated you from God. Not only did he say, I'll take the punishment for that, but he said, you know what, when you become my child, I'll give you an A-plus perfect record before God. So that God can be in relationship with you. He can come and live in you. Because Jesus is not dead anymore. He was buried and now he's alive. And he comes to live inside any person who says, I want a relationship with God as my heavenly father. And he's made a way for that to happen. Through his death and through his resurrection on a cross. God could have just let you take the punishment for your sin of trying to live life without him. He could say you don't deserve to be near him or know him or spend forever with him in heaven because actually you and I don't deserve that. But he didn't. (laughs) He says there's a place for you in his family because Jesus died in your place and took the punishment that you were meant to get. God cannot forget you because he loves you like crazy. Enough to die for you. God can't forget you because he designed you and put you together in your mother's womb. He knows your name. He knows how many hairs are on your head. God can't forget you because he made you to know him forever and to worship him and to live for him. He's got an amazing purpose for your life on this earth and it can start today. (laughs) To those of us who are mothers and in mothering roles, I believe God is saying today, I see what you do. I notice. I hear. I remember. It might feel like no one sees, but I see. And I will enable you to fulfill this mothering role. I've called you to outwork as you put your trust in and release your trust in me. How do we know this? Well, I love it that the Holy Spirit inspired the Apostle Paul to write these words to Timothy and that they are recorded for us as scripture in the Bible. In 2 Timothy 1 verse 5, Paul writes to Timothy, I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I know that that same faith continues strong in you. Lois and Eunice. We don't really hear much else about them, but these were godly women, a grandmother and a mother to Timothy. And Timothy went on to play this important part in the expansion and strengthening strengthening of the churches that Paul pioneered. He travelled with Paul, was often his special ambassador to the trouble spots in their missionary work, places such as Corinth. He became a leader of the church in Ephesus and probably joined Paul in Rome shortly before he was martyred. We don't hear much about Timothy's dad. And some biblical scholars think that he either wasn't around much or he wasn't a believer in Christ. But there are so many Loises and Eunices in this room. So many. (laughs) Many more of us also who desire to help their children grow up full of wisdom and faith in Jesus. Ready to follow him and do his will. But you know what? We desperately need God's help to do it. We need God's help with raising children to adulthood. We even need his help with continuing to have input into adult children and our spiritual kids. And God is so willing to give us the help that we need because he he so values and honours mothering. He so values and honours it. Mothering takes hard work. It takes effort and endurance. But we are not meant to go it alone. (laughs) As we look to Jesus, he produces his life and characteristics in us so that we're more like him. He prompts us and he shows us how to respond in love. He helps us to never quit believing for the best for our kids. Have a look at this verse in 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 3. It says, we remember before our God and Father your work. It takes work, but it's produced by faith. Your labor is... Hey, (laughs) don't talk to us about labour. Your (laughs) labour 
prompted by love. It's got to be prompted by love, by the power of the Holy Spirit, helping us to respond in a way that is loving when everything within us wants to go. "Ah." (laughs) Don't tell me you never feel like that, mums. And your endurance, it takes endurance, but it's inspired by the hope we have in Jesus Christ who's with us, who's working in us. We don't have to be perfect or get it right all of the time. Hallelujah. But we can grow in our relational dependence on Jesus. Faith is meant to be lived out in the everyday of life. Yes, even in the messy parts. In 2 Timothy 3.15, it says, You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood. That's Lois and Eunice teaching Timothy. And they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. As Lois and Eunice prayed for and taught Timothy the Holy Scriptures, they were preparing him for personal faith in Jesus too. And as they genuinely lived out their love for Jesus, Timothy was inspired to follow him too. And Timothy was used powerfully by God to help establish churches and bring many to Christ. Mothers. Aspiring mothers, spiritual mothers, we can invite Jesus to help us follow him and point our children to him. How? (laughs) We can talk about him in our homes. We can practice forgiveness and practice asking for forgiveness. We can think about the kind of character traits we want our children to have and ask God to help us model them in our own life and explain and impart them to our kids. For primary school age children and younger, start to engage with, if you haven't already, and read age-appropriate Bible stories, sing songs in the car, learn memory verses. For teenagers, you can talk with our fantastic youth leaders about good resources, both online and in print, that can help you. If you don't know where to start, find another Lois or Eunice. Notice something you like about what they're doing in their family and ask if you can have a coffee with them and learn from them. Start with something. Do you know we have an amazing ministry in the life of our church called Mops, Mothers of Preschoolers. And I was involved in a team that set it up because we were feeling isolated and like, oh, we're spending a lot of time with our kids at home. We need a place, a safe place where we can come and recognise and remember that we're not alone, that we're doing something of incredible worth, that we're actually raising these precious kids to grow up to be men and women of character. Let's take a look at Hannah's story. Do you know, Mops is an amazing ministry that has, I reckon, around a third to half of the women who come, come from community, just community, not necessarily originally connected to our church. They come because they want a tribe of other mums who they can do life with and know that they're not alone. And in that context of relationship, of people sharing their stories, they can actually hear about Jesus. It's such a powerful ministry. If you know a mum who has a preschooler, they meet on Friday fortnight invite them to come. Invite them to come. Link them up with our coordinator, Monica Hordeko or Louise Wabnitz, the mentor. It's a fantastic opportunity for mums to recognise that they're not alone. 
Do you know there's women here today who have taught and sowed into your children who are older or grown up, and right at this moment, they're not following Jesus. Don't give up. Don't give up. As the word of God has been sown into them, believe that they can and will receive salvation by trusting in Christ. Believe that they're going to return to him in faith and repentance and turn their lives back over to him. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you a gift of faith. Keep praying. (laughs) Your prayers are powerful because you are in right standing and right relationship with Jesus. And Jesus is actually interceding for your kids. Do you know the gospel is good news? That verse I just read before, it said that that Timothy was taught the scriptures to give him wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. But salvation comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. Whether you grew up in a Christian home, whether you grew up in not a Christian home, whether you've never heard about Jesus except for today when you came to this service, you can actually begin a relationship with him. You actually can enter into a relationship with your heavenly father through what Jesus has done, just by saying, Jesus, come into my life. I believe upon you. I put my trust in you. And we're going to have opportunity to do that right now. Right now. (laughs) Why don't we close our eyes and pray? Jesus is here by his Holy Spirit. And he wants any person here who doesn't know him to receive the salvation, the relationship, the eternal promise of heaven, the assurance of forgiveness of our sins, to receive the salvation he offers. It's a gift. We can't earn it, but we can receive it. Sometimes we try and wrap our head around it. We can't make sense of it. But we can receive it by trusting in Christ Jesus. Right now, wherever you're sitting, if you've never, ever invited Jesus to come into your life, if you've never said, I don't want to live independently of God anymore, Just receive him now, right where you're seated. You can say something like this, Jesus, I put my trust in you. Thank you that you died and you took the punishment for my sin. I receive your forgiveness as a gift. I know that I don't deserve it, but I thank you that you offer it anyway because you love me. I receive you now, Jesus. I'm now a Christian. I'm a child of God. Help me to follow you and to walk in your ways. And thank you that I now have a place in my Father's house, that I belong in your family. In Jesus' name I pray.